Welcome back guys, Travis here. We are on day 11 of my return to fitness, day seven of the vlog. Took two days off the vlogging, very busy, full-time dad duty yesterday and just a lot of work and doctor's appointments on Wednesday. But I did get in two nice easy rows on those days, so just the easy 15 minutes on Wednesday, 20 minutes yesterday night. Um, but back again today, got some time, looking forward to sharing some more knowledge with you guys and taking you through my session today. So on our Tuesday vlog, talked about steady state and UT2 training and what it is, why we do it, um, the how much we should be doing it. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I execute that. And so a little bit of kind of what I do to set up for a good steady state session, how I move through it, basically to ensure that I'm feeling good, I'm getting loose, I'm getting warm, and I'm getting the most out of that training, especially since that training, as we talked about in the last vlog, should be making up 83% of your miles in the preparation fitness building phase and 53% or so once you start shifting toward that competition. So a lot of time spent at this energy zone, so you wanna make sure that you're doing it right. So I'll take you guys through a couple things I do to kind of set up for an ideal steady state. Now, a lot of people will break up their steady state into intervals. I am not a proponent of that. I think that you should really be going consistent. And if you can't go, if you're breaking it up because of the effort, because it makes it easier, then um, just slow down and string your pieces together, all right? So you should only be stopping to get some water. Um, if you're tight and you really need to stretch out, stretch out, but uh, hopefully you can kind of do a little bit of stretching before you actually start so you don't have to interrupt your steady state because the steady state, the adaptation that you're making is coming from the steady, cardiovascular pressure on your circulatory system and the instant you stop your heart rate is going to recover and that pressure that cardiovascular pressure is going to decrease and you're going to lose some of that training effect so avoid breaking your steady state up unless and i will be a caveat if you are a newer rower and your technique is just not up to par yet you know if you're doing anything that you think could create an injury over you so you don't have a good connection through the core for uh, creating impulse with the legs and transferring that to the handle without it kind of getting caught in the body because of bad posture those things you break it up all right but I would also say maybe just do less steady state you know and do more kind of functional strength and drills until you get that technique where it needs to be so that you're confident that you can execute your steady state safely but Back to the steady state, try to do it as a single interval. You can stop for water. You need to stop for water. All right, you gotta stay hydrated. But those stops for water should be pit stops. They should not be rest periods, all right? And so it's like, you think about NASCAR, you think about coming into the pit, and it is those guys are trained to go as fast as possible. You should go as fast as possible. You should stop, you should get your water, uh, wipe off your sweat off your forehead, whatever you need to do, and get right back into it. And ideally, you're not losing more than 15 seconds or so to that stop for water. And there's ways that you can set up before you even start your interval to help with that. And so with my setup on the ERG, my water is there. It's exactly where it needs to be when I'm reaching down for it. You'll notice that the cap is off, so I don't have to sit there and unscrew the water bottle. I can just reach down, take a sip, put it back down, and go. All right, I can't tell you how many people will just stop, sit there, and they're unscrewing, drinking, and screwing that cap back on. Don't do that. It's wasting your time. All right, so think ahead, prepare to get the best, most effective steady state in. Other things, keep what you need close, all right? And so we got a towel on the chair there. We got the music close, all right? I like to use music on some of my stuff, as most people do. If your music is 10 steps away and you have to stop and get up to make an adjustment, bad idea, all right? You're decreasing the effectiveness of your training by doing that, all right? So keep the ability to change that music close. If you get to a song you don't like, don't stop it, all right? You should be able to reach down, press a button, no interruption of your rhythm, of your training, all right? If you can't do that, music's far away, then don't get up, all right? Your training is more important than what song is playing at any given time, all right? So either plan ahead or concede the fact that you're gonna listen to whatever happens to come on and play. Beyond that, 
um, for actually when we get started. And so I found through lots of experience that the most effective steady state experience is going to come from a nice, patient warm up. Take your time, let your body loosen, let it get warm. You know, I've gone over my typical warm up, it's 10 minutes, usually three minutes at what I would call a fast walking pace three minutes at what I would call a slow jogging pace, and then gradually easing into whatever I expect to be my base pace for that steady state workout. And I might even settle into a pace that's maybe a second or two slower than what I usually average, and then I can kind of extend for the next 20 minutes or so and ease down into that average, all right? And so you don't want a huge gap in your steady state from what your slowest splits are gonna be after your warm to what your fastest splits are gonna be, all right? So I don't wanna be starting at a 208 if I'm gonna be averaging a 206 and finish at a two minute split, all right? If I expect to be averaging around 206, I'm starting around 206, 207, maybe a 208, and maybe by the end, I'm down at like a 204, 205, all right? And I'm just kind of sitting at that 206, right through the middle, averaging that. And those increases in speed are not because I'm deliberately pushing harder. It's really just because the longer you get into a steady state workout, the warmer your muscles are gonna be, the looser you are. So if you're at a consistent effort, then you're gonna find that you're just gonna be getting a little bit more speed as you go through that workout because your muscles are becoming more effective through that warming up. Along those same lines, especially when I'm coaching, I'll look at it and I say, when you're doing a steady state workout, no matter how long it is, there is no 10 minutes in that steady state that should be slower than the 10 minutes before it, all right? And you can even, you know, for elite, pre-elite athlete, Division one college, or honestly any college, it really should be any five minutes, all right? So any five minutes should not be slower than the five minutes before it, all right? And that is showing that you're at a nice, progressive pace that you can sustain. If you're slowing down at aerobic pace, then you've done something wrong, all right? And so you either haven't warmed up properly or you're pushing too hard because steady state is by definition a sustainable effort, all right? And so keep that in mind as you're going through. And the other thing I'll see, people will do this long steady state and then all of a sudden, last minute, last 30 seconds, maybe last two or three minutes, they start to go hard, all right? And they're going well beyond what their average is for the rest of that aerobic workout. Don't do that. It is just not a helpful thing, thing to do, all right? You're not getting any additional aerobic benefit or any training benefit, and certainly not any anaerobic benefit from pushing at the end of your steady state. Take the pace that you've held for the, for the workout, bring it to the finish line, all right? In order to get a training effect at a higher energy zone, you've gotta put in volume. And so the next highest energy zone from UT2 is gonna be your UT1. And UT1 needs to be executed in a volume somewhere between a half and at the maybe two thirds, three quarters of what your median steady state workout is. And so obviously, if you're just speeding up for the last minute or two or 30 seconds or two minutes of your UT2, you're not spending enough time at the that UT1 in order to get a significant training benefit and on down the line. And so what you are doing though is you are generating additional fatigue and energy management, fatigue management is gonna be critical to, to maintaining consistent training all right so what you want to do is you want to ensure that your training from one day doesn't affect your training from the other day or doesn't affect your ability to execute good training on the other day certainly there's going to be work days and rest days but it shouldn't be like well because you know i really hammered it in the last few minutes of that steady state you know i'm a little looser a little tighter later on all right you definitely don't want to do that so keep that in mind as you're setting up to get a good steady state workout in so one Prepare, all right? Get your water, water by the erg. Get your towel to wipe off sweat if it's hot. Get your music where you need it to be. Whatever else you need to do to set up, make sure that's done. Two, patient in your warm up. all right? Take your time. Start at a nice, easy pace, all right? You should be, when you start taking those strokes, you should be really be focusing on the mechanics of your stroke. Make sure you're getting good, reps you're developing the good muscle memory that you want for the rest of that workout you're getting good habits from stroke one 
take your time, all right? So for a younger athlete, you might only need five to 10 minutes to get loose to warm up. If you're an older masters athlete, certainly if you're getting into your 50s, 60s, and beyond, maybe in the 40s, if you haven't been super active up until that point in your life, you might need 20, 25 minutes of really just kind of patient moving to get your body loose and ready for any effort that comes beyond that. And so, you know, it's hard certainly as you're moving through your athletic career, or if you had, you were a competitive athlete younger, you took a break and you're coming back to it like myself, to kind of still be in a mental place where you think your body is working the same way it was before. It's not, take your time, ease into the effort. All right, so that's it. So that was the warm up. that's two. And then three is stay steady, all right? Keep a pace, find a pace based on what your previous training has been. You're not gonna make quantum leaps in improvements with your training, all right? So if you're around a 206, for your average like me last time, then you're probably gonna be around a 206 for your average this time, all right? So trust that, go into that, settle in. Improvements are gonna come in fractions of a split. They're not gonna come, you're not gonna go from a 206 to a 204, 203, you know, all of a sudden from one workout to the next. And the third is hold that pace, or the fourth, is hold that pace all the way to the end, all right? And so no sprinting at the end of your steady state, no big acceleration, just hold your pace, finish the workout. Steady state is about the accumulation of volume, of aerobic volume, all right? And so it's the trial of miles. As my favorite book, Once a Runner, quoted, so use that, it is the trial of miles, put your miles in, be consistent, be effective, and that's it. So those are my tips. Hopefully that helps you with your steady state execution. I'll set up, give you guys a little bit of video of my rowing today in case you'd like to follow along. Otherwise, skip to the end. If I have any thoughts afterwards uh, from my session, I will happily share them. Otherwise, thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, subscribe, hit a like, and uh, share this with others that you think uh, can benefit from the knowledge. Thanks, guys.
All right, so wrap that up. Uh, I didn't stop for water. Um, it's not too hot outside. So I forgot to reset the camera because it shuts off after 30 minutes, but you got 30 minutes of that in. Um, felt, uh, felt really good for the first 25 minutes. And uh, then just started kind of feeling a little bit of heaviness in my arms, which if you watch the previous ones, um, it's kind of typical for me when I'm rowing. Um, just kind of feel a little bit of sluggishness in the arms uh, when I'm doing longer steady states, but but I did a much better job of maintaining my pace, much better than Tuesday where I bumped up into U1. Finished this piece around a 171 heart rate, so about three beats higher than what I would usually finish a U2 when I'm in good shape, um, but still felt comfortable, so it's typical for the heart rate to beat a little higher um, when you're not in full condition, but I uh, feel good about that, so um, thoughts. So thoughts from the row and kind of getting the time to pass effectively on those steady states is you just gotta find your own mental strategies and uh, you definitely want to have a focus on some technical aspect for it. You know, for me, I really think about holding a nice, long, relaxed arm stretched out through the lat as I'm coming into the catch and then just really try to make sure that I'm connecting with the legs kind of holding that extension I'm not catching with the with the biceps just relaxing so that I can really hang off the skeleton off that front end and then once I've established that hang make sure everything is following through together and smoothly into the release so that I am accelerating the handle into the back end of the stroke you know you find your own thing but you gotta find other strategies too you know I like to break it down a lot into sections I count a lot and so you know at 18 five minutes is 90 strokes um, 10 minutes is 180 strokes and so you know I just kind of count count through you know do something to kind of keep that mind engaged if you're listening to the music that's great I try not to kind of let myself drift off into kind of you know thoughts about the day and life because that tends to make the, the time go by slow I will kind of um, role play for my racing, I'll kind of imagine myself, you know, in situations, either in a, a tr good training environment or good water, but more often I'm imagining myself in various races, you know, I'm in the final of my championship or, you know, Olympic final or whatever it is that I happen to be focused on, you know, for my short-term or long-term goals, you know, or just fantasy goals and just kind of like imagine yourself and just kind of, you know, pretend almost like you're rowing and you're in slow motion and so you have a lot of time to focus exactly how am I taking my strokes how am I feeling how am I accelerating how am I reacting to everything that's around me the the other crews you know my own uh, my own feeling fatigue where the finish line is what the spectators sound like you know everything you know just kind of be have a vivid imagination find strategies to, to help you pass the time um, some other good technical ones are to set little uh, performance challenges while you go. So I like to say, see how many strokes that you can row at the same stroke rate in a row. You know, and try to string that together. You know, if you if you can row four to five minutes without breaking stroke rate, that's that's kind of elite, pre elite level consistency. And so if you try that and you're only going five, ten at a time, then that's a skill that you need to develop, and you can do that on steady state. So just say, all right, my stroke rate is 18. Let's see how many strokes in a row I can row at an 18. Um, you can do that with your split too. How many strokes in a row can you hold your split? And then if you're super advanced, how many strokes in a row can you hold the same split and stroke rate before you deviate on one of those? Um, and you can start out just kind of adding, maybe give yourself a three second range on your split and a two stroke rate range, and then just kind of increase the difficulty. But all these strategies will help pass the time more effectively when you're doing your steady state rowing and uh, and it'll just make it more fun and more importantly it'll make it more effective in terms of elevating your rowing going forward so a lot of tips there hopefully that helped uh, hit that subscribe button if you want more share this with your friends like the video um, I think that helps with the algorithm get the word out but I'm going to do some strength work uh, capture a little bit of kind of maybe a montage for you guys to, to close out today and uh, we'll see you back 
probably tomorrow. Thanks, guys.